am Adil Kumar and in this video we will learn if second derivative is greater than zero how will the first derivative be and uh, what is going to be the consequences on the function itself and same thing we'll analyze when second derivative is less than zero we'll kind of begin uh, from uh, what is known to us and then derive the result so so let's begin from the parabola itself and let us say that we have a parabola which is opening upward, something like this. Let me write down an equation for this. We can say the parabola is f of x equals to x squared, let's say plus, plus 5. So in that case, the derivative will be 2x and the second derivative will be 2. Simple as that. Correct? Now what do you see here? If you go backwards, that is to say, if you start looking from here and then go backwards, then you will realize that second derivative is greater than 0, right? So what we see here is that the second derivative is always greater than 0 it is plus 2 right so it is always greater than 0 and when second derivative is always greater than 0 then the shape of the curve f of x is what it is concave up you see that so all along the domain of this parabola the shape is concave up and what we see is that second derivative is positive 2 greater than 0. So we could also conclude that if second derivative is greater than 0 or we can say it is positive, in that case the shape of the parabola is going to be concave up, right? So let's take another example here uh, which is similar but this time what I will do is I'll just reverse flip it. So, so if I take a parabola this time like this which is concave down and write down similar equations we say f of x equals 2 this time is pointing downwards so minus x square let's say plus 4 then the derivative will be minus 2x and the second derivative will be minus 2 which is less than 0 do you see that now as you can see if second derivative is less than 0 how about f of x, the function itself? So what we conclude here is that if second derivative is negative, less than 0 means negative, in that case, f of x is concave down. This is a general result and it will always happen. So in this particular case for a parabola, what we saw is all along the domain of the function but in some functions if I have a function which is kind of like this let me sketch another function here and this time let's take combination of uh, concavity so if I have a function which is kind of like this okay in that case what you will observe is that during this interval let's say this interval it is concave down so in this interval you will observe that the second derivative is what tell me greater than or less than and in the other which is this portion where it is concave up what do you expect what do you expect here so if it is concave up as you can compare in this interval it is going to be greater than zero in the previous interval where it was concave down it is going to be less than zero correct and at this point second derivative will be equal to zero this point is called point of inflection where the concavity changes correct so that is how you could actually analyze or relate second derivative with the function so if I say this point is at A, so in this particular case, 
in the interval from minus infinity to a second derivative is less than 0 and in the interval from a to infinity second derivative is greater than 0 and the curve is concave up right and in this portion it is concave down so that is how concavity of the function is related with the second derivative now there are a few other points which you should also notice and that is let's now analyze the first derivative f dash x first derivative basically is tangent so on this curve if I draw a tangent right here it is negative here it is 0 and then it becomes positive so what do you observe about the tangent or the first derivative it is increasing in the interval right in the interval so it goes from very high negative value it goes from negative value to zero and to positive do you see that so it's always increasing as you move from left to right in other ways if I draw the first derivative here which you can see is 2x so it is basically a line which could be kind of like this always increasing right so so this is increasing on the other hand if I draw minus 2x then it will be kind of like this which represents the first derivative of the function so it is always decreasing Do you see that this minus slope negative 2 gives you that decreasing point of view correct so the second thing which you observe here is that the tangent so tangent is always slope of tangent is decreasing for concave down and increasing as you move from left to right so in this particular case slope of tangent decreases from left to right always when you see or compare graphs you have to see from left to right so this statement is not very much required is that okay so that is another very important thing which you observe so one we saw that it's concave up right second we saw that the second derivative when it is positive in that case the first derivative indicates that the tangent slope is increasing all throughout its interval why you will also see that the curve if I have drawn this tangent here then the curve is above the tangent right so so that's another point to make and that is f of x lies above tangent line and on this case f of x is if I draw a tangent here, let me draw one and show you. So if I draw a tangent here, the graph is below the tangent. Do you see that? So in this particular case, f of x is f of x lies below tangent. So these are few important things which can help you understand situations given where the second derivative is positive or negative right so let's summarize if the second derivative is greater than zero that is positive graph of the function is going to be concave up and the graph of the function will be above the tangent tangent slope will always increase as you go from left to right correct on the other hand if the second derivative is less than zero the graph of the function will be concave down slope of the tangent line as you move changes from positive to zero to negative so that means it decreases and the graph will always be below the tangent line if the second derivative is zero now this condition second derivative is zero and so there are two conditions if and and 
So for point of inflection, we have two conditions. If the second derivative is equal to zero, and this is very important, and concavity changes. Then you have point of then point of inflection, right? Then point of inflection. So there are if and and conditions. If the second derivative doesn't change from negative to positive or positive to negative, then you will not have point of inflection. It's very important to understand that part. <coughs> okay, uh, I've been taking example where the second derivative is zero. Well, I mean, uh, so second derivative could be at this point undefined also. So that the critical point will be, so which will take a few examples, zero or undefined. Let me add here. Right, zero or undefined. There could be cusp for a corner. Uh, then also the concavity will change, correct? Especially in the radical function. Anyway, this gives you some introduction about uh, second derivative. Knowing second derivative, how can we get back to the function? That was the main objective for this video, and I think that is captured. Uh, feel free to write your comments, share your views, and if you like, that'll be great. Thank you, and all the best.